that you're somewhat familiar with solving differential equations for general solutions, now we're going to get into finding particular solutions. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to find a particular solution of a differential equation. All right, we're going to jump right into the examples. The only difference is going to be, you'll notice that we're given some information, and hopefully you're used to that. When we're given information, we'll actually find the C. That's what makes it a particular solution. Okay, I do know that I'm going to be taking the integral on this one because I see a Y prime in here, which means it's a derivative. So to get rid of a derivative, I'll take the integral. So let's get it set up. And I do also notice that um, I have an X and a Y in here. So I do know that before I get very far into the problem, I need to cross multiply. But right now this form, this equation is not set up to cross multiply, so that's what I'm going to be doing first. So I'm going to have the square root of x plus the square root of y, and y prime will turn into dy dx equals zero. Now again, still this problem does not look like one we could cross multiply on, because we don't have a fraction set equal to a fraction. So I'm going to subtract the square root of x so that we will. So now I'm going to have the square root of y, dy dx is equal to negative square root x. Okay, now from here, let's make the left side a true fraction, and we'll make, put a 1 underneath the right side to make it a fraction. Now we're ready to cross multiply. So I'm going to get the square root of y, dy is equal to negative square root x dx. Okay, from here, my variables are separated. To get rid of the derivatives, I now can take the integrals. Okay, so before I do that, though, now I'm going to change both of those to powers. So I'm going to get y to the 1 half dy is equal to negative x to the 1 half dx. And now from here we can actually use our power, apply our power rule to get at this. So we'll add 1, so we'll get 2 thirds y to the 3 halves is equal to um, negative 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. And then don't forget, we can't find c if we don't ever put plus c in the problem. Okay, trying to simplify this a little bit more for y before I solve for c. To get rid of this 2 thirds, I'll multiply the entire thing by 3 halves. So when I multiply, distribute that 3 halves, I'll get y to the 3 halves equals negative x to the 3 halves plus, remember, 3 halves times c is still just c. All right, at this point, I'm going to find c. So remember, when x is 1, my y will be 4. So I'll get 4 raised to the 3 halves is equal to negative 1 raised to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, 4 raised to the 3 halves, if you don't remember how to do this, we're going to take care of the 2 first. So the square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 raised to the third power is 8. So we get 8. 1 to any power is 1, but there's a negative in front of it, so I'll have that, which leads me to find that c is equal to 9. So if I rewrite my formula, I'll have y, e y to the 3 halves is equal to negative x to the 3 halves, plus 9, and then finishing solving for y to get rid of the 3 halves power, we'll raise both sides to the 2 thirds power. Just do the reciprocal power. So y will equal negative x to the 3 halves plus 9 raised to the 2 thirds power. And that would be my answer. All right, let's try another one. Again, if you would like to go ahead and pause me for a little bit and see if you can get this one on your own, I challenge you to. Otherwise, let's go ahead and work through. Okay, solving the differential equation, the derivative is there, so I am going to go ahead and um, take the integral. But since there is an x and a y, I do know that my first step is to cross multiply. And the fraction is already set up for me to do that, so thank you. We're going to get 2y dy is equal to square root of x dx. All right, set up. The y's and x's are separated. I can go ahead and take the integral of both sides. All right, using my power rules on my left side, I will simply just get y squared. And then on the left side, I'm going to rewrite this as x to the 1 half. And then if I use my power rule on this one as well, I'll get 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, and before I solve all the way for c, I, usually it's easier to find c at this point before we take the square root of both sides. So from here, again, when x is 0, y is negative 4. So negative 4 squared is equal to 2 thirds times 0 to the 3 halves plus c, which gives me 16 is equal to, oops, 16 is equal to c. All right, so from here, we're going to now plug that in. I'm going to have y squared is equal to 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 16. All right, now finishing this up, to get rid of the square, we'll take the square root of both sides. So we'll get y equals the square root 
of 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 16. And normally we, would, we do need to put that plus or minus in front, but since this is a particular solution, <clears throat> The particular solution is not going to have a plus and or minus. We need to decide which one does it need to be. So we're going to keep this particular solution in mind when we're doing that. Um, so I am going to have the, um, just try it out. If I put that 0 back in there, so this would end up being 0 plus 16, which is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. The only way that I'm going to get negative 4 for my answer is if there's a negative sign sitting out in front of my problem. So my particular solution is actually going to be y equals negative square root of 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 16. So that is my particular solution. And if you're just joining me back, hopefully you got that as well. So hopefully now you can find a particular solution of a differential equation.